NVIDIA released DLSS frame generation alongside their RTX 40 series Ada Lovelace graphics cards and at the time not that many gamers and reviewers really liked it that much. It implemented way too much input lag and there were quite a lot of artifacts as well. But after two years I'm going to show you why you should enable it for the most part. So before I get into the video, I'm going to break it down and try to explain how it actually works. And the way it does is it leverages the optical flow accelerators in the new RTX 40 series GPUs and AI to implement fake frames amongst real frames. And the reason why I call them fake is because they technically aren't rendered, but AI is used to predict what future frames will look like according to frames that have been rendered. This has the potential to massively boost frame rates, but at the cost of potential artifacts and input lag. Thankfully, Nvidia have developed reflex low latency, which does kind of keep a leash on the input lag, so to speak. And if you're playing a story game, I suspect it's not going to be that much of a problem. But to see if it is actually that much of a problem though, I've tested using this MSI Gaming X Slim RTX 4070 Super. A big thank you to MSI for sending this out. I don't get to keep this graphics card and MSI hasn't sponsored this video and no money changed hands. You can check it out in the description down below. But all testing has been done in my testing PC, which has a Ryzen 5 7600, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, a Western Digital SN770 NVMe SSD, and an MSI X670E Tomahawk motherboard. Starting off with Cyberpunk 2077, and as it's an NVIDIA sponsored title, I'm expecting the DLSS frame generation implementation to be quite good in this game, and that it is, because this is probably the best implementation I've seen with this technology, as there were literally zero issues which I could perceive. Also, the performance is quite a big jump, with the average frame rate going from 52 frames per second, to 85 FPS with it enabled. Also, the latency doesn't jump up too much either. It will be on the screen right now. And while I was playing this game and doing all my benchmarking, it felt totally fine. I didn't even notice any impact to the latency. So overall, I'd say Cyberpunk is definitely a pass. And if you've got something like an RTX 4070 and you want to play with ray tracing on, I mean, DLSS frame generation is a very good technology for this. Star Wars Jedi Survivor was a bit of a weird one because when enabling DLSS frame generation in the menus, it creates artifacts while going through the pause menus if you want to change like, settings or something like that. It's like the menu is being rendered and the frame generation is trying to predict what the next frame will look like and sometimes it's just a jumbled mess. But thankfully this doesn't correspond to the UI in-game so it's not really that big of a deal because I don't think you're going to be in the menus that much in this title so I don't think it's going to be a big hindrance to the gameplay. I've also observed quite a healthy increase in performance with frame generation enabled going up from 63 FPS to 102 with it enabled which means I'd probably say enable it in this game, despite the weird UI bug. But the thing that matters is the heads up display isn't really glitching out or anything like that because of frame generation and the input lag wasn't too bad either. So overall, I probably would recommend enabling it in Jedi Survivor. Just make sure you're getting above 60 FPS because I suspect you might see some artifacts if you were getting below that before frame generation. But with that weird UI bug, I'd probably say that's down to more of the developer than NVIDIA and frame generation itself because it's not exactly the best of PC ports, is it Jedi Survivor, as you've probably seen from my other video, so there is that. Frame generation in Hogwarts Legacy is absolutely brilliant. We see a massive performance boost going up from 57 FPS with DLSS frame gen disabled to 91 FPS with it enabled, and more importantly, the frame pacing got much better. Like Jedi Survivor, Hogwarts Legacy usually suffers from quite poor 1% lows, therefore bad frame pacing, but with DLSS frame generation enabled, it kind of smooths it out quite well in fact. The only issue I observed was the subtitle boxes, there were like artifacts around the box, but if you play without subtitles or if you just don't really look at them that often, I'd say go ahead enable DLSS frame gen. But if you really look at the subtitles, 
I'd probably say it's not really worth enabling. And the last game up today is Spider-Man Remastered. And let me say this for starters, frame generation really does help out in this title, particularly if you're playing on a weaker CPU. That is because in Spider-Man, my Ryzen 5 7600 usually caps out at around 120 FPS, no matter the resolution and graphics card, that's just like the best it can give out, I suppose. But frame generation doesn't add any noticeable CPU overhead. And as a result, the frame rate went from 82 FPS with it off to 143 with it enabled. This is a much smoother experience and it allows you to sort of bypass some CPU bottlenecks in a way, which I think is kind of cool. While playing, I didn't observe any artifacts, which is brilliant news. And this could be down to the frame rate I was getting before enabling it as I was getting a very healthy FPS number before. So yeah, overall DLSS frame gen in Spider-Man Remastered works brilliantly. For the most part, Nvidia's DLSS frame generation technology is absolutely brilliant. It does an excellent job at boosting frame rates and more importantly, with no recognizable impact on the CPU. Because unlike upscaling, which just renders at a lower resolution and uses AI to upscale to your monitor's resolution, frame generation inserts fake frames which aren't rendered into, well, the game, which will boost your frame rate. And because these aren't rendered, it means the CPU doesn't have to prepare them, which means you can bypass some CPU bottlenecks while you're at it, which I think's pretty cool. What isn't fake, however, is the perceived smoothness with frame gen enabled. With games like Hogwarts Legacy and Jedi Survivor, which are known for very poor 1% lower performance and frame pacing, DLSS frame gen does a very good job of cleaning up this poor performance and it's almost as if these developers kind of use frame generation as kind of a crutch for their poor optimization. Admittedly, frame generation does come at a cost of around 10 to 20 or maybe even 25 milliseconds of average PC latency. But in story games, I don't think this is a big deal. And for the frame rate that you're going to be getting, I'd say it's certainly worth it. Also, if your base frame rate pre-enabling frame generation is higher, the lower your latency impact is going to be as well. So make sure you're getting around 60-ish FPS on average before enabling it. This will reduce the latency and the artifacts as well. But because you're getting performance in story games doesn't mean you should be enabling it in first-person shooters and more competitive titles. Here, you want as little input lag as possible. And I don't think DLSS frame generation is a good option for improving frame rate in these types of games. So just stick to the story titles. Frame generation isn't without its issues. As I said before, you kind of need at least around 60 FPS before enabling it to reduce artifacting and input latency. But even then I enabled it with like 52 frames per second and it seemed okay. But if you're more prone to input lag, I definitely recommend getting at least 60 FPS on average for the optimal experience. Also, there was some weird recording bug with it enabled as the screen would just flicker whenever I'd use shadow play for some reason. But to get around this, I had to turn frame generation off, start recording and then turn it on and it was totally fine. I'm not sure if this was just my testing system. So just let me know if this has ever happened to you in the comments down below. I'd like to hear it. And then there's the weird artifacting or the potential for artifacts. Like I saw today with the subtitles in Hogwarts Legacy, admittedly, this was quite a small problem and I don't think it's really that much of an issue. And I suspect if you were in cutscenes, it wouldn't be glitching around like that. And then lastly, the Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Yeah, the weird UI bug in this game is just really weird, but I think this is down to more respawn than NVIDIA themselves. So there is always that. But the most important thing is the gameplay was totally fine and the HUD in-game was fine as well. So for the most part, would I recommend enabling DLSS frame generation for story gamers? Definitely. It does a brilliant job of boosting frame rates with very little quality or input lag penalties. And personally, in story games like Cyberpunk and Jedi Survivor, I'll definitely enable it if I was dailying a 40 series graphics card. But unfortunately, every day I use an RTX 3080 and I can't enable it because that's Ampere and not 
Ada Lovelace. But as I said, if I had an RTX 40 series GPU, I'd definitely enable it myself and I'd recommend you to enable frame generation too. But if you want to see how the RTX 4070 Super gets on, which I tested today, there's a video for it up there. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good rest of your day.